Since the height of the pandemic, companies have been pushing to bring employees back to the office. Big tech has been a proponent of that. And in the past year, names like Google and Facebook's parent Meta, Amazon, all updated their policies to require workers to spend more time in the office. Recent reporting also found that in one tech company's example, Dell, which at one time had benefited from the surge in remote work, has told employees to essentially choose between being 100% remote and getting promoted. Let's get some more perspective from Michael Sissons. He's founder and CEO of executive search firm CareerList. Michael, uh, you talked to a lot of different companies about their policies on this. Have those policies started to evolve, would you say, over the last couple of years? They've definitely been an evolution. We went from a world where everyone was like, work wherever, we're great with that, you know, to a world that's really been sliding back towards an increase generally um, into the office. So for most of the senior roles that we're working on today for, you know, public companies for sure, and even for most mid-market private equity companies, the vast majority of them are expecting people to be in the office at least three days a week, if not more. And even if someone is remote for some of these senior positions, remote might be a more of a hybrid environment where you can live where you want, but we're still expecting you to come to the office at a minimum every other week, um, you know, and fly in to be with your peers. So there's definitely been a, a significant shift back to the office and the battle continues to rage every single day. We talked about a couple of tech examples there. Is this in any particular industry m m more prevalent than others? Definitely. Like, John, how, how many days a week are you going into the office right now? Um, <laughs> People you know. can see where I am most of the time. Yeah. So, you know, it, it ranges from, a, 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 a kind of divides across a few areas by industry. So obviously, you know, areas like media and yourself are in every single day. It also ranges by geography as well. So if you're down in Florida or Texas or in some of the more southern states where maybe we're a little bit more open during COVID and didn't have the same level of office disruption, they have continued to go in the office on a very regular basis. So it varies based on company size, bigger companies in, maybe a bit more flexible, mid companies, like early stage growth, a bit more flexible. Um, and it also varies a lot by industry. There is definitely no one size fits all, um, but there is a growing discrepancy between, you know, what employees are looking for, especially married with kids, versus what companies are looking for in terms of the number of days that, that, are, that people are showing up in, in office. Okay, now for the companies themselves, what does this environment look like if you say, I am going to be a little bit more direct with our team that your future growth could, have, could, could be um, impacted by where you decide to work? I guess if it was a really tight jobs market, you might be reluctant to be more forceful in that language, but like, what is the process for a company itself in making that uh, you know, either or scenario for employees? It's really a little bit different for everyone, but the general theme has been company says, as of this month, we will be in the office for X number of days per week. We prefer that those days are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, all the way up to we will be in the office five days a week and we expect you to be in the office by you know such and such date. Um, and if you're not, it ranges from you know situations like Dell where they'll say, hey, keep your job, but you're not gonna be promoted, which probably means over time you're gonna be replaced or situations where you know, you're in or you're out. Um, it, there's a varying degree of enforcement that's happening, but there's definitely a general theme to work. companies communicating that it is expected that you're in the office working. Um, and there's definitely disadvantages for some groups and there's advantages to other groups in terms of these changes that are happening. You know, the other change that we're hearing about every day is artificial intelligence. Everybody's now kind of pulling out their pen and trying to reassess what productivity charts are going to look like over the next decade, because all of a sudden we've got this turbocharged opportunity through technology. But I would imagine at the same time, that's going to invite, if it hasn't already, more metrics on how productive people have been, either working from home or working in a hybrid uh, uh, position. Do we have any good, strong stats on that yet? I think there's definitely multiple sources, I would say, of those stats. I wouldn't necessarily say there are ones that apply towards, specifically towards artificial intelligence. We definitely see artificial intelligence playing a significant role in a fair bit of highly functional, you know, work, whether that's, you know, sales with prospecting or outreach, or that's marketing with creativity and brainstorming, 
or financing with finance related jobs with model review. So we're already seeing those type of types of working practices have an impact. I think artificial intelligence has the same impact outside of the office as inside the office, but we're definitely the expectations around people's output and the amount of hours that they're being most productive with the areas of their brain that are the highest value to the company. Artificial intelligence is definitely going to remove a lot of the busy work and increase the demands on people who are really using the parts of their brain that humans are best for, which in a lot of ways also sometimes comes back to face to face communication, which speaks to, you know, increase increased being together, whether that's virtually or physically. We're definitely going to see those changes continue over the next uh, number of years here. OK, um, so conclusion at the end of the day, um, it is if you are in the jobs market or you are trying to uh, advance your career right now, the bottom line is if you have been working remotely, uh, you're likely going to have to, uh, at the very least, be spending some more time in the office. Is that the firm conclusion here? The conclusion is you get to choose your own, you choose your own adventure. There will be great adventures for people who want to go back in the office, and I would argue probably more of them over time. And there's also obviously going to be adventures for remote. But if you're if you're unemployed today, there are there's definitely a big connect between people who are disconnect, people who are laid off while they're remote, and are realizing finding a new remote job is much more difficult than it was back two years ago.